board. Good morning. This is Bishop James Hansen Saki of the Christ Church International in London, United Kingdom. We are grateful to God for giving us a gift of another life to see another day. I'm grateful to God for his mercies over the days, over the past years, over last night, and over this morning. May God continue to preserve your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, I just want to encourage you on the fact that you need to stay focused on the vision that God has given to you. Keep your eye on the vision. And there are things that fight vision. One of the greatest enemies of vision accomplishment is fear. Fear can paralyze your vision and make you even give up on the most greatest things that God even tells you to focus on and to achieve. You see, have you noticed that fear makes you miserable? You see, looking at your life and the future with eyes of fear will never produce joy. Fear is a very dangerous enemy that you need to fight by the help of God. But sometimes a lot of people have become so fearful and most of the time they are not even aware because the existence of consistent fear in your life will paralyze every great dream and vision that God gave you. You see, in Numbers chapter 14, verse 1 to 2, as the scripture teaches us, it says that, you see, after 10 out of the 12 spies that Moses sent to go and spy out the land, 12, 10 out of them, that appears like majority out of the 12, you know, came and gave their negative reports of the promised land to Moses. And here is how the Israelites responded. Numbers chapter 14, verse 1 to 2 says that then the whole community began weeping aloud and they cried all night. They had bad news. They had a report that said, we are not able. They had a report that said, even though God promised us the land, we have found giants in the land. Every promised land was not a no man's land. There will be giants in the land, but you come with the power of God and dislodge them and take possession. Every dream you have had in your life, there will be giants in your promised land. You need to dislodge them and take over. God never promises a no man's land. Every promise of God, there will be either the devil there already, some enemy there, or some occupying the place whatever be the case you move with strength with power with skill and knowledge and you take over in the name of Jesus Christ and possess your land the Bible says that the people lifted their whole voice and they began to weep aloud and they cried all night their voices rose in great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron and they said if only we had died in Egypt or even we have died here in the wilderness. They complained. They cried. They complained. They murmured. They criticized Moses. They did stuff because they heard a news that seems to make them afraid of the fact that God himself was even with them. Can you imagine? God was with them. He has shown visible signs of his presence with them and they had news and they decided to cry all night. Fear gripped them. You see, what happened that night is what I call a full-blown pity party. The Israelites were so afraid of what was going to happen that they just wanted to die in the desert rather than to trust whatever God had in store for them. Sometimes we give up and make such statements, I better die here, I'd rather die in this. Uh, don't make those statements, it doesn't matter what you heard. If God is with you, the challenge will give way in the name of Jesus. These verses from Numbers 14 include four warning signs which I want to draw your attention to when we read Numbers chapter 14. See, when these warning signs show up in your life, you will know that you are looking at the future with eyes of fear. These people had God with them, but they started looking at the future with eyes of fear and they started making utterances they shouldn't make, making demands and desires they shouldn't walk in. Watch out for these four things from the scripture we read in Numbers 14, 1 to 2. I pick four things that is a clear symptom of someone that is full of fear and about to paralyze your dream. Number one, your sadness begins to increase. Your sadness increases. You see, depression can be caused by a lot of things and it robs you of joy. If you feel sadness pushing out your joy, consider whether you are allowing fear to skew your perspectives in life. It is a very dangerous thing to allow a perpetual state of sadness in your heart. You need to do something about it immediately. You need to dismiss it immediately and put your trust in God and say, I am well able to do this. Number two, your complaining increases. See, when you become afraid and fear gets in, you want others to share in your misery. 
If you don't think you have been complaining more lately, and don't deceive yourself, check with your spouse or your close friends. Sometimes they can see how your fear is manifesting itself better than you can. Number three, you start becoming very critical of others. You see, the Israelites all complain about the very people who had led them out of slavery. They complain about Moses who brought them out of slavery. Fear always sows seeds of doubt in us and it makes you feel you can't do this. Somebody has forced you into this. But that thing you are doing is your highway to your destiny. May God help you in the name of Jesus. And number four, you want to go backwards. Whenever you see that you are desiring to go backwards to your old ways, to the way you were before, to the comfort zone where you were. You, it's a sign that fear has gripped you. Fear towards the vision has set in. Because you see, their perspective was so skewed by fear that the Israelites thought it would be better to die in slavery in Egypt. Can you imagine that? Of course, they didn't really want that. But when you are living with the vision of fear instead of faith, you can't look at the future with hope. I pray in the name of Jesus that these four things will be eradicated from your life. And also look out for them when you see them change focus in the name of Jesus. You don't want to be someone who complains and is always looking back. That's why God wants you to see the future through the eyes of faith, not fear. Start growing your faith today by reserving intentional time with God and in his word which says in Philippians 4.19, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. May this scripture inspire hope in you that my God will meet all your needs. And the more you get to know that God and his promises are surely going to be honored, the more purposefully and joyfully you will move towards your future. I pray this shall be your story today and this shall be your story this year. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, Amen and amen. And until I come your way again tomorrow, I'm Bishop James Hansen Saki of the Christ Church International. I want to pray with you in Jesus' name that God will remember you, that every spirit of fear will depart from you. Every manifestation of these four characteristics that comes and manifests itself, that makes you abandon vision, abandon your purpose, give up in Jesus' name, be cast out of your life. I pray strong hope coming to you from this message today. I pray in the name of Jesus by the help of God, you will rise again, attempt new things, try again, you will not fail. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that God will fill you with his Holy Spirit. I pray that your eyes will be open to see what God is pointing at. I pray in the name of Jesus that you look forward with optimism and great faith towards that vision. It shall come to pass by the help of God and by the grace of God. You are more than a conqueror. Jesus did not die for animals even he cares for them. You, he died for you. He created you in his image after his likeness. Hey, you are the Bible says you are more value than many sparrows, and the very hairs of your head are all numbers. Are all numbered. You can take it, you can do it, you can move forward. All things will turn around. Step in by faith in the name of the Lord Jesus, and may you finish very well in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you, and have a blessed, fruitful, and productive day. Bye-bye.